Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Chris from Simply Classic and welcome to episode one of Designer Handbag Inspirations. So before we get started, first subscribe if you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate that. Second is we have until July 30th, so one more week to pre-order t-shirts. And if you remember, it is Simply Classic, Inspire, Create, make it your own. So this is the mint green. And um, after the pre-order, I will have some in stock, but I might not have your size. So if you want one, go ahead and order it now. I'm going to be looking over here some because I have my computer up and I'm looking at the photos I will be later on editing and putting in this video. So please excuse if I'm kind of going back and forth. But basically what this is going to be is we're going to look at a designer handbag and then we're going to look at what pattern we would use to create that design. Now some of them are very obvious. You're going to look at it and say, oh Chris, I knew that. But we're going to take a look at them anyway, just in case some of you maybe not are not aware of all the different patterns out there. And then another thing I want to say is that sometimes there's multiple patterns for the same thing. So I'm going to go over what I found and what I think would work. If you think something else would work, probably will, post it in the comments below so that other people can see it as well and we all learn from each other, right? And I get very inspired by y'all. So we're going to start right now. So this here is a coach and I just noticed this coming up. So this is like a brand new bag from Coach. It is very obvious to me what it was. And that is the Aura Rosa Lutz Marina Divider Bag. Now, the differences in the bag, the, the Coach bag versus the pattern, is you've got um, in that middle section a little thinner of a piece of leather or um, trim than the pattern that we have um, from Aura Rosa. You can certainly make that slimmer. Um, Aura Rosa, of course, has a lot of um, rivets, which I kind of like that. I think it kind of jazzes it up. Um, and the on the coach bag, I think there's a little bit more of a um, what would the right word be in the front of the bag a little bit more of a dip so you could easily take this Aura Rosa pattern and change it to make make it for yourself make it your own and that would be um, I think almost perfect for this coach bag okay so that's the first one the second one we're going to look at is this one here. Now this is a Dooney and Burke bag and I've actually had this bag on my phone for a while. I, I really like the look of it. I like the size of it. Of course, y'all know I'm a tote bag girl. Um, and when I was looking for patterns for it, the one that I came up with that I thought would work really well is this swoon bag. It's the Annette bag. Now, what you would do is you would keep the trim piece um, underneath the handle that kind of looks like a smile. You would keep obviously that piece off and then I would extend the sides of the bag out a little bit. Um, the, the swoon pattern has an in some. I would go ahead and extend them out um, to kind of give it that same that same shape on top. You might even have to add a little bit of a um, hump in the middle in between the handles to get that same shape. But otherwise, it really is very similar in the Dooney and Burke bag. Um, the pockets might be a little bit different. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think you could certainly alter the swoon a net bag to change it up and make it your own so that it looks like this Dooney and Burke bag. So before we go on to the next one, let me just say that a lot of times what we are attracted to in a, when we see a bag is the materials that they use. Maybe the colors um, or the mixture of 
the colors that they use. So as you go through and you look at these, kind of pay attention to that and, and see what you think is really attracting you to the bag. Is it the shape of the bag? Is it the color of the bag? Is it the style of the bag? Is it the combination of colors? Okay. Um, you know, all of the different options that we have with Bodio and My Punk Broidery, um, the Genuine Leathers, all the different places like Tandy or Springfield Leather, they have so many different options for textiles. So you really have a wide variety of things that you can choose from. All right, let's move on to the third one. So this here is a Brahmin tote. And it is just so stunning. I just love this. I like the weaved look in the front. And from what I can see, this is actually pieces of leather that they weave together. Now, as you can see, it's a big weave. It's not, it's not a really thin um, weave. It's only in and out like once or twice on each one. But notice one thing here. The width of the weaves is the same on the three rows. The height of the weave is actually the first two are the same, but the last one appears to be about half of the height of the two above it. And then of course you have a bottom layer piece there. Okay. The sides have like a band at the top. You see that? And the band is the same color as the bag. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but I think that's just a really beautiful bag. So what I found and what I think I would use is the Mormino Valora bag. Now the Valora bag, what I would do with this is I would either probably decrease the height difference between the pockets and the top of the bag. I would either make those the same or just slightly make the top of the bag just slightly larger than the pockets, you know, maybe half inch. Um, or I say the pockets, that side piece, it's not pockets, the, the side piece that kind of sticks out. You would um, eliminate that front pocket. Now, what you could do is you could put the pocket on the back and then on the front just have that weave pattern. Other than that, um, obviously you'd have to make some alterations for the actual weaving itself, but that should be just cutting a front panel, taking other pieces of leather or whatever it is you're going to use, weave them together, stitch them down, and then that stitch will be right in the seam allowance. Now keep in mind, you're probably going to have a lot of bulk with that, especially if you're using uh, a leather. So you're either going to have to scab your edges or make sure that you use a thin enough leather that will handle that. And then you probably would need an industrial machine for this one. Okay. But I really do think that those two bags are very close. Okay. Our next one, this is, this is an interesting bag. This is a Louis Vuitton. Of course, I had to add a Louis Vuitton in there. And this is the Felda bag. And as you can see, it's like $1,500. And I looked at this bag for a while because I thought, what in the world? How in the world do they make this bag? What is this? So if we go to this next photo, you'll, you'll see kind of a side view of it. And it almost looks on the side like it's a bucket bag but it's not a bucket bag at the top. They just have that pull on the sides. And then if you look at this third photo, when it opens up, it looks like a bucket bag on the inside. So whenever I see a pattern like this, I always look at it and think, okay, what is going to be the hardest thing to duplicate? Or what do I think is the most important thing to have in a pattern um, go, you know, to, to make the bag. 
So I actually came up with two different patterns for this one. The first is this here. It is The Upgrader by Chris W. Designs. And you can see that the bag has kind of the same shape. But keep in mind that if you want to do this, if you want to try to make this Louis Vuitton bag, you're going to want to extend those sides out. You're going to want to add some to that because as you cinch it up with those poles, you're going to need that extra room. Okay. So, so this was the first one. Now the Louis Vuitton bag is obviously a lot shorter. It's very short and kind of short and fat. So what I would probably do is, um, take a few inches off of this bag here, this Chris W design bag and, um, and then extend the sides. And then I think you pretty much have the bag. Now the Louis Vuitton bag, I think is a round bottom. I don't think that matters. I don't think that that is going to be that big of a deal in using this pattern for that bag. I think that you're going to get the same look just, you know, who cares if it's a square or a round bottom? Most people don't pay attention to that anyway, right? So the second pattern I thought would work with this, possibly, is this Blue Cala Sunflower Tote. Now, I have made this bag. I have made this sunflower tote. Because, you know, I'm a tote bag girl. And it is a huge bag. It is really a big bag. So if you're going to do this, I would say you need to probably try to make it at maybe 50%. I mean, I would cut it down quite a bit because that Louis Vuitton bag looks pretty small. So it's probably what I would start with. And then you're definitely going to have to add, you can take away the pockets on the side. You see that this tote has those slip pockets, take that away. And then you're going to have to extend those side pieces out. So you're going to have to, what you would do is take your pattern piece, you would cut it down the middle and just make it wider. Okay. Now this bag, actually that's a gusset. So you're going to have to keep the bottom part of the bag the same and on the gusset, just kind of open it up and, and make it from that. But this sunflower tote is an awesome pattern. I love it. I really do. So if you ever get the opportunity to make that tote, you need to, it's really nice and it's nice and big. I love it. Okay. Moving on. This is a Spartina clutch. So Spartina 449 is a, um, a line of bags. And I think I've actually done a video on one of the um, designs. I had a custom order for one and we altered a pattern. And actually, it, I know I did because I, a couple of you have asked me for the PDF pattern of that. So I am in the process of trying to make a couple of patterns. Ooh, trying. I'm not a pattern designer, but I'm trying. So if so, that pattern should be available for you, hopefully in the not too distant future. But let's go back to this. So this is a Spartina 449 clutch. And isn't it just cute? I mean, this is, it's got the seagrass main body. So it's very organic. And that's typically a very um, informal look. But by adding this, I guess you would call it like ice blue to it. It just jazzes it up. And then you have that twist lock. And then if you notice, they also took some ribbon and weaved it through the chain and just using a chain as a wristlet. And I just thought this was absolutely gorgeous. I just love it. It looks very high end to me, which Spartina 449 is. This is a um, another view of it here just to show the sides, you know, how the sides are connected. So it is a side gusset. And basically what you've got here is just like a flat, like a flat piece of fabric that you, that you fold up to add each side and then you put side gussets in. Okay. And then you add the piece on the top. So the pattern, two different patterns I looked at for this. I have another Chris W design pattern and it is the Daryl's drive. So this is what it looks like from the front. So you see, you have that, that twist lock or that 
um, lock at the top. Obviously, it's a clutch. You wouldn't put the handles on it. And here's a side picture of the clutch, you, or excuse me, of this bag. You will see that the gussets are made in that way, okay? Now, you wouldn't add the bottom piece um, necessarily because you have a clutch and you don't need that piece of vinyl or leather at the bottom. So you would have to reduce the pattern. I would say you probably have to reduce the pattern. I mean, I don't have this pattern. I don't exactly know how big the bag comes out, um, but I would probably reduce it down to 60% or something to start and see how that, see how that works out. So that's my first thought. My second thought is this here. This is a pink pony design pattern. And it's already small, so you wouldn't have to do anything as far as changing the size of it. And it's called the Reno Rounded Makeup Bag. So it's got the same look to it, except for you'd have to add the top piece of vinyl or leather or whatever on, you know, on the very top to put that snap or, or turn lock in. But I think your size wise, this is a great option for that clutch. It's, it's the same, um, of course, leave the zipper off the top, but it's the same shape. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, our next one is this here. This is a bag that sold at Burdolph Goodman and it is a very upscale, classy bag. It's called the St. Laurent. And it's a satchel, what I would consider a satchel. You know, every, there's, there's some basic pa or basic bag shapes that we have, right? We've got a tote, we've got a bucket bag, we've got a backpack, we've got a sling, um, you know, you've got these, these different things. And, and basically what changes them from one pattern to another or from one design to another is either the, the shape of the bag, the, you know, the actual um, shape at the top, or sometimes it's the embellishments on the bag. And that's where you take it from one designer to the next, et cetera, and it changes the bag up. And sometimes even the same pattern designer uses the same shape, they just add a little something to it or they change it just a little bit. So this is just a really traditional satchel, very sharp, very classic, I love this bag. So what I looked at for doing this um, pattern is this, this here. It is um, a pattern company called So Chic Bags. And it's not a super popular one, but she sells on Etsy. And this is called the Margot bag. So this bag looks a lot like some of the um, other designer bags that I have seen out there that have this basic sas satchel, satchel shape, it's hard to say, but maybe they have a different kind of flap on the top or a shaped flap. And I think that really the, again, going back to the shape of the bag, what type of bag it is, I really think that this bag here, this pattern here would be a perfect fit. So what you would do, of course, is you would keep your flap off. And I have a feeling that this St. Laurent bag has got an interior zipper, like a, a zipper down in it, maybe a couple inches. So you probably just take the flap off, add a zipper. Um, you can leave those little side panels off to give it a clean uh, look. And this St. Laurent bag, of course, has got the band coming through at the top. So you can go to Ohio Bag Company. They have some really neat closures like that. Um, and of course, you can always look at Bringberry and Emmeline for those closures as well. Okay, moving on, number seven here, we have now Liz Claiborne. You know, Liz Claiborne is a obviously a designer bag, maybe not like a Louis Vuitton or one of those really high ends, but they, she still has got some really pretty bags. Now this is again, a very classic bag, very classic shape. Um, 
It's a, what's this called? The tuxedo tote. It kind of looks like a tuxedo. So the pattern that I thought would work best for this, and the main thing I was looking at here is the fact that the top of the bag was higher than the sides. So you could go back to using the Mormino pattern, right, that we looked at earlier. The Mormino Valoria bag would be, I mean, it's almost exactly the same. Or another pattern I looked at was this here. It's another Chris W. Design pattern. Um, it's got the, the band on the top, just like the Liz Claiborne bag. You would make your front panel the same fabric, right? Um, so this pattern is showing an option to have a dual fabric on the top. And um, you would probably keep out the grommets or the rivets there where you're connecting the, the crossbody strap. Unless you want a crossbody strap, that would be a great option to add to this tuxedo tote design. The handles come in about the same way. Um, I like on the Liz bag that there is some hardware there that is, it almost looks like little keepers, you know, those little, um, you can get them at Emma Line and at Bringberry strap keepers that you can slide in. I think that looks really nice. But I think that's a really good option. So you've got a couple different pattern choices there. Okay, bag number eight is the, it's a bag by Sack. I have really enjoyed watching the Sack Spring line this year. I just really am taken by it. I, I love the, a lot of the, the stitching they have on their bags. I love the organic elements. But this should be kind of obvious here. This one is, you know, with the little sides that come down all day, every day, this is the Spoon Brooklyn Traveler. So the shapes are slightly different, not a lot. Um, you know, I think the Brooklyn Traveler is a little more rounded. This looks a little more square to me. And size-wise, you would obviously go with a smaller version of the Brooklyn Traveler to get this look. This is the Canyon Satchel by Sack. But you can add that, that center detail. Um, I have a video on that where we did it on a couple of bags. So, um, you know, that's certainly an option. And then you can always add the tassel. So that is a really good match there as far as pattern bag match. Okay. This next bag is another Dooney and Burke bag. And it is called the Saffiano tote. No, Saffiano zip satchel, excuse me. So I love the look of the outside of the bag. It's so pretty. And then when you open it up, look at how big that is. It's got the snaps on the side. Isn't that pretty? And it just, snaps together and clips together and so if you're not carrying that much you don't have to unsnap or if you're carrying a lot you can and that's what I tend to do is load mine up so the pattern that I found and I mean this is almost an exact match is the swoon charlotte city tote and if you look at this pattern online you will see that it opens up the same way I think this is a really gorgeous pattern. Now the, the handles are a little different. Um, on the Dooney and Burke, it just comes from the top of the bag where the Charlotte City Tote, you've got connectors. So if you decide you don't want that, just change the way the handles are. Also on the Dooney and Burke bag, you've got a zipper on the front, which you can certainly add that on that Charlotte City Tote, no problem. So otherwise, same basic shape, same basic bag. Okay, for our final bag, I've got, um, and I think I'm going to start doing this in the series, is I was sent some photos by a viewer of a bag that she did, and it's this bag here. 
It is a Magnolia bag. So Magnolia, you know, Chip and Joanna Gaines. And this is on their site. And it's a crossbody. And it is, I think it comes in two different sizes. I think there's a tote and there's a crossbody. And this is the photo I have of the crossbody. You see it's $180 for this tote. It is genuine leather. And here's a picture of the inside. You see it's not lined. It doesn't have a zipper, it's just snapped. It's $180. Now, obviously there's a lot of stitching involved because you have the um, 45 degree angles at the front. But isn't it, it's really pretty, right? So here's the photo. I, I just kinda wanna showcase this because this is so good. Um, this is the photo that she sent me. This is her version of the bag. Isn't that gorgeous? I was just blown away. She used cork on hers. And here's another photo here. It is just, she actually took the um, bag, and I'm going to read you exactly how she explained she did it. But she actually sewed all those strips together. And then she put another strip down the middle. Here's a side view. So she borrowed the, um, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll tell you in a minute when I read her, her, um, her email, but she borrowed these handle connectors from a recent pattern that we've seen. And then here's her inside. So on one side, she put card slots. She put a double snap on the, on the top, double magnetic snap. And look at those card slots. She's got a rivet down each individual um, layer. And then on the other side, she has this slip pocket with the, the trim detail and a rivet in the middle there too. And you notice on her card slot, she even has a zipper on that. Isn't that gorgeous? So. You all inspire me. When I tell you that, I'm not kidding. You really do. Um, you are amazing, the things that you can do and the things that you think of. And I love that you take my and other people's suggestions and then you just run with it. You know, a lot of times I'm here, I feel like I'm here to give you the ideas and then you're going to be taking it to the next step. So let me just read you her email. Okay, so here is her process. The first thing she did is she drew it up on a piece of pattern paper and she drew the lines at a 45 degree angle, obviously, because you know we, we saw that, that front of the bag had that 45 degree angle. So that way she could kind of see like the size of the bag and if the angle was right. So she had some scraps, this is why we keep our scraps. And she cut one and a half strips and sewed them together with a quarter inch seam allowance and then top stitched each strip as she assembled. And she just sewed in rows, just all the way down. The final strip at the top and at the bottom had to be a little bit wider than the one and a half inches to accommodate the angle after the strips were cut on the angle. Okay, so, so you see what she's saying where um, once you turn that, you go from sewing straight strips and you turn it, that top piece, you're going to need a little bit more than that inch and a half to go straight across. And same thing at the bottom. Okay. Um, so she then, the center strip, she what just um it was just a single layer and she just put it right over the center there just to kind of cover the two where, where she stitched those two pieces together and then the back she just left plain um you know the sides were just as wide as she wanted the bag to be and she tapered them a little bit at the top and then, that's right, it's the Liberty Bag by Needle and Anchor where she got the side straps from with the O-ring. So, what I'd like to do is every time I do one of these videos, I want to feature one of your bags. So, 
I have created a Facebook group called Simply Classic Inspiration. So join the group, post photos, and when I go to do one of these videos to film the next one, I'm going to find a bag on there that I want to showcase and go ahead and put it on here because again, y'all are so, so, so inspiring. So a couple things to recap. I'm going to post everything below um, or leave links for everything below. If I can leave a big link for the designer pattern, I will. Some of these are old photos and I can't find them anymore. Some of them, honestly, I'm not really 100% sure where they came from. Um, and some of them have sold out. So if that has happened, I'm not going to be able to post it. But for the newer ones, I will do that. And then, of course, I will post all of the pattern um, designers and all the patterns that I mentioned here. Also, don't forget, get your t-shirts. Please don't forget that. And then also be sure to join my new Facebook group, Simply Classic Inspiration. So I already have a bunch of photos for next time because, I mean, every single time I would scroll, I'd find all kinds of good stuff. This video could have been like about probably two days long, no lie. And also I'm probably gonna do one on handle inspiration. Ooh, I found some cool, cool handles. So until next time, stay inspired and happy sewing.